Hello, you got here before me. Wait a minute, let me hang up my umbrella. You never know when you might need an umbrella. Now, what's today? April 8th, 2021. I brought some show and tell. A beautiful rose. It's rose season now in Florida. I wish they had some way for you to smell this. And what about this other one? Isn't this delicate? But it has no smell because it's made out of a very thin wood. I went to a festival once about three years ago in this county and they were selling these I think I think it was only like 50 cents anyway um, there's a difference between real and artificial anyway at this festival they had something fascinating, camel rides, a real camel, big camels. So I was um, standing there outside the fence admiring them. And the lady who walked the camel while the people rode them said to me, come on, have a ride. And I said, I can't, I'm afraid of heights. So she said, don't worry, if you fall, the ground will catch you. So here we are. I wanted to talk about homeschooling and welcome you to homeschooling. There's some wonderful things you could do when you're learning at home that you can't really do all the time in a classroom. One of them is take a break and eat. Here's something else that smells nice. Here's something else that looks nice, but you can't eat it because it's it's artificial. It's made out of styrofoam. See? Now what was I saying? Yes, one of the things you could do at home, taking a break during your studies home of homeschooling, is eat, but you can also eat while you're studying because you're home. There's no place like home. Another thing you could do is go use the restroom if you need it or stand up and stretch. And if you need to do something more than stretch, you can dance, right? You can't always do that in the classroom. You can also dress comfortable. Now the reason I'm wearing work clothes is because it's springtime and at this time of year after I planted vegetables and it's so warm outside, I need to water them every day and do other work in the garden. What I like about this type of work clothing is the pockets where I can have very interesting things in my pockets. So let's do the back pockets first. All right. Here's my right back pocket. And here's something I made a while back, made out of yarn. So if you're a girl and you like braids and you think it's fun to have a braid made out of yarn, you could keep it in your pocket or on your desk and, uh, I don't know, wear it somehow. And if you're a boy, wait a minute, did I already take that other thing? Oh no, here's my left back pocket. If you're, if you're a boy, you can uh, dress up and be more formal and uh, wear a tie. Actually, this is my dog's tie, usually on his birthday, which is Valentine's Day, 2007. I put this on him so he could be dressed up for his birthday. Okay, 
back to my pockets. Let's see. Well, this one has the phone. You know, when I was working in the school, I take out my phone for some reason, like to set a timer for studying with the kids. They, a few of them would say, why is your phone so small? And I would say, because it's old. Okay, then my keys are in my left pocket. And what's great about this is there's more pockets here. Another thing you could do when you're studying at home, if you're a girl, is put on some perfume. This one, this one is gardenia oil. If you're a boy, you could um, get some other toy and, and play with it as a break from your studies or while you're studying. You're home. Another thing you could do when you study at home is, is wear some kind of shoe that you cannot wear at school. This is a slipper. I'm having trouble with this pocket here. I got it. Okay. Now, when I worked in the schools, some boys would bring interesting things in their pockets like miniature robot toys, miniature cars. This is something I bought online a few years ago. They're actually supposed to be earrings. Can you see what it is? It's made out of plastic and it's a little fish that looks like it's swimming in a bag of water, just like how you buy it at a pet store. They give you a bag with a little fish in water and you bring it home and you put it in your in your pond or in your fish bowl. They're kind of heavy, so I don't know, I just keep them because I like them. What else? You can take a break when you're doing homeschooling and do some kind of arts and crafts. Now maybe you can help me with this because I don't know what to do with these things. I suppose you recognize them. They are the covers to those fruit and other kind of food in those little, what is it made out of? Those little packages and they have this cap on it and you have to turn it and open it and then you squeeze it out and eat it or drink it. You know when I was um, in the schools there was this one boy that every day I was there at lunchtime he would ask me if I could turn the cap and open it for him um, and, then, and then I said to him once are you asking me to open it for you because I look strong and he said is that a joke I said, no, I am strong. Why? Because I exercise and work with my hands. And do gardening and et cetera, et cetera. There's something else in this bag besides these that I also need ideas for. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Can you guess? Can you guess where? These are from So I have one blue, one yellow and and one white one. These are actually believe it or not, they're actually from the inside of a dental floss container those those little containers after you use up all the floss you know people usually just throw away the container but if you open it up which is really easy to do you'll you'll find one of these in there because that's what the floss is wrapped around so if you think of anything what I could do with these cuz how could I throw it out they're so nice looking they're strong they're colorful 
One day I'd like to explain to you the color wheel and colors that are opposite, but not today. All right. Let's say, let's say you want to learn about chemistry. So one of the ways I help myself to remember the chemical names for common everyday things is to look up online what the chemical formula is for that thing. So, for example, this is an old cologne bottle which was emptied. I used it all up years ago and I saved the bottle. It's made out of glass. And I filled it with something recently, this week, and I wrote on it, instead of writing the, the name, you know, with, uh, with the alphabet, with letters, I wrote the chemical formula. And I'll have to study this further because chemistry was not an easy subject for me. But anyway, that's the chemical formula. CH3, is that it? Am I reading the right direction? Yes. CH3, COOH. Do you know what it is? I think that I'll, I'll let that be your first homework. Look up this chemical formula and tell me what it's what it stands for. It's something very useful. I don't know what we do without it. Think about it. Look it up. I wonder who will be the first one to get the answer. CH3, COOH. By the way, when I was in uh, my chemistry class, in, um, let me see, in the community college many years ago, in the 90s, but I didn't go to community college when I was young. I went when I was middle-aged. Anyway, when I was in the chemistry class, the teacher was very strict about safety rules. And he said, if they're working with a substance, you're studying a, a particular substance, um, let's say, let's say, no, let's say this was the container. And he said never to smell it like this. Never, never, never. You want to know how it smells? You go like this. You hold it here, and you have your hand here, and you go like this, and you smell it like that. In fact, one of my fellow students was smelling it like this, and he got, the teacher got very upset for a reason. He said, and he said to the, the, the young person, you're a very dangerous person. Don't ever do that again. Okay. Um, this makes me remember um, a mechanic. I used to have a, a truck mechanic. Pardon me a minute. Anyway, back to the story of my truck mechanic. He used to come to the house. Wasn't that wonderful? And, and he wasn't even expensive. And one time when he came, he was trying to figure out what was wrong with my truck. And he, he put his head down. And he started smelling the different fluids that are in the engine of the truck. And I told him, you know, that's not healthy. That can make you very sick to put your nose right next to it. And then I told him the story of my chemistry instructor that told us, you know, you smell it like this if you have to smell something. Never with your nose right over it. I hope he listened to me. I haven't heard from him for a long time. Who knows? Anyway, back to the benefits of homeschooling. You can eat, you can go to the restroom, you can take a break, you can even take a take a nap. 
And, and something that would be very important to me, you can draw, you can doodle, you can be learning something and, and drawing it while you're listening. Um, because the, the teachers that I worked with got mad. They got angry, annoyed when they saw children drawing. But, you know, art is also a communication device, just like letters in the alphabet is, just like numbers are. In fact, as long as I'm talking about communication, do you know what is a language that everybody in the entire world understands, even if they never studied it, even if they never used that language? They all understand it. Does anyone knows, know what it means? I'll tell you what it means. Music. Music is a language. Have you noticed sometimes when you're watching a movie that when something scary is happening, they play scary music? When something is hap happy is going on, they play happy music? You see, it's a language. Because what is the purpose of language? To communicate. All right. Did I say everything about homeschooling that's good? No, I'm sure there's a lot more things. Here's something. Um, I have this really nice dictionary. Um, and the cover is kind of getting broken. So what I did was um, take some paper that I got from a, a catalog for plants and I made a cover for it. You see? So it's not just art and, and drawing, it's also crafts. And you can take a break from home in your home when you're doing homeschooling and play music. Do you have a horn or a drum? Or you could make a drum out of a container. Just turn the container over and, and beat on it like a drum. And you can, if you have any letters around the house, maybe that were, they were some kind of toy or some kind of um, arts and crafts uh, supplies. And you could think of something that you want these letters to stand for. And then you could display it somewhere. And it would help you remember something important. Now, some of the things I thought of, these are leftover letters from a sign I made many years ago on the farm. So for a long time, I was trying to think uh, of what they could stand for. First, I thought it could mean the kitchen. But now, recently, I thought of something better this could mean. It could mean, I don't know if I have this turned right for the, for the video, but anyway, um, it could mean keep trying. Or it could mean keep thinking, right? Those are two good things. If you think of anything else, let me know. By the way, this, these were just raw wood, and I did paint them. What else? Something you could do at home for a break from your homeschooling or part of your homeschooling is to, you know, have a, a magnifying glass and go look at things in the yard or go, go look at things right in front of you. A piece of wood, a piece of paper. And if you notice up there, um, on top of that mirror, there's binoculars. That's also an interesting thing to use in the yard. Maybe you could look at a butterfly up close or what else? Caterpillar? Birds? It's funny about birds. There could be a bird outside the window, maybe six feet from my window, who's, you know, taking a bath in the water I leave outside. And if I come anywhere near that window, even like three feet from the window, they know I'm there. So in a way, they're like dogs, very sensitive. They, they know what's happening around them. 
And the dog, my goodness, all I have to do is open a can of a pumpkin and he could be, you know, eight feet away from it. And he, you know, he's alert because, well, dogs love, love pumpkins. So, you know, he could smell it. Or he's in the house. And he's like looking in the distance all of a sudden and he's making noises like like maybe there's another dog walking in front of the house like 50 60 feet away from our front door and he knows it's amazing i think it has something to do with the vi vibrations and footsteps of the other animal maybe the vibrations that we can't feel travel all the way in here okay so this was like an introduction to homeschooling and how it can be even better than, than school in a building with your friends. And there, you know, of course we need friends to talk to, to play with, to do things with. And um, that's why there's other children in the neighborhood. And sometimes there's clubs in your city in your town, in your county, for children. So it's not like you can't be with other children. So think about that. And this isn't my first homeschool lesson, but it's kind of an introduction, the good things about homeschooling. And uh, you, could probably, you could probably think of a lot more good things that I'm not thinking of. And I do have a homeschool course that I made um, several years ago, and I've organized it, and I'm making plans to, to start that. So any ideas, let me know. And remember, I need ideas what to do with these things. And I need someone to be the first one to answer what substance is this? What is the, the name, the common name of this chemical? This wonderful, wonderful compound. It's a, a group. It's a group. Elements. Ta the table of elements. Maybe you could look up what each one means also. It's fascinating. Isn't it funny that the things that are so important, some of them are invisible. We can't see them unless you have some powerful microscope, of course. Maybe I should have been a scientist. I don't think so, though, because I'm too. it takes me too much time to understand things. By the way, don't feel bad if it takes you time to understand things and other people, you know, get it real quick. There are people in history, I have a list here, who took very long time, took a very long time to understand things. But the things they understood were so important, so deep, and like everyone else was in a hurry, and they didn't take the time to understand it, so they made fantastic discoveries because they were slow thinkers. Because a slow thinker is many times a deep thinker. Deep, deep, deep. I'll leave you with one name to begin with. Isaac Newton. Look him up too.